We're going to review two additional plays that we run as part of our base series, the 43 reverse and the 22 wedge. Now, the 43 reverse, uh, if you go by the numbering system, this means the four back will be running the ball through the three hole. Now, obviously, the four back is in a position where he cannot receive a direct snap from the center. So the way that we do that is the center snaps to the one. The one will uh, take steps towards the six hole and meet the four back here, handing off the ball to the four back roughly behind the right power tackle. The four back will then take it, uh, running to the opposite side of the formation, and then run through the three hole <coughs> underneath the kickout block of the three back. Um, over here to the weak side of the formation. Now, if you look at this from a high level, this is pretty much the complementary play to the 16 power. It is to the, the same play to the exact opposite side of the formation, except for the four back is going to be the one that is running this, uh, running this play, uh, running the ball this time instead of the one. This also takes advantage of the fact that many people begin to key on our one back. And so when the one back starts to run over this direction, the defense assumes it's a 16 power or 18 sweep uh, which we've hit them with a number of times. So the defense begins to flow, uh, but the four back gets it and comes underneath. It's a, it's, a, it's a reverse, but it's not the typical type of reverse because it's a power reverse. We have lead blocking. Uh, it is not based upon deception. We do not need deception for this play to work. It is a, uh, it is a power attack to the weak side of the formation. The blocking rules within the interior line from right power tackle to left guard are the same as the 16 power and 18 sweep uh, blocking rules. Everybody has the exact same rules. The right tight end and the left tight end both make their uh, four and six and one and three calls respectively. But this time the one and three call made by the left tight end is absolutely critical because it determines which, uh, you know, who the three back is going to be blocking on this side and also um, which hole the four back will be running through. So in this formation here, the left tight end will look down uh, to his inside for the first defensive lineman on the line of scrimmage inside of him. In this case, it's the D tackle here highlighted by the yellow. And this D tackle is lined up inside of this left guard, just, just to the inside of him, uh, in which case that call will be a one call. The one call by the left tight end tells the three back that he is going to be kicking out the defensive end. The defensive end on the left side is the man on the line of scrimmage, uh, the first man on the line of scrimmage on or outside of the left tight end. Uh, so that's who the three back will be kicking out. The two back will take a jab, upon snap of the ball, will take a jab step to the right and then turn and lead block through the hole. He will be blocking the cornerback. Um, the left tight end here, you can see there is a difference here. The left tight end is not blocking the safety on this play. The left tight end is blocking the outside linebacker on the left side of the offensive formation uh, for this play. The uh, one back uh, will take two steps upon receiving the ball and then hand the ball off here to the four back coming underneath him. Uh, then the one back will continue on around the corner faking like he has the ball and is running an 18 sweep. The four back upon snap of the ball will immediately um, start heading in, will turn and go inside with his left elbow up, right arm down, taking, receiving the handoff from the one back. The one back's job is to get that handoff nice and easy to the four. The four back job is to have a good pocket for the one back to stick the ball into. The four back should not be looking at the ball as the one makes the handoff. Upon receiving the ball, the four back should accelerate, get in, get into this hole, run underneath this, uh, blocked by the kick out the kick out block blocked by the three back coming up here looking to peel inside because as you can see the seam should be uh, if the left tight end is able to make his block and the two back is able to make his block should be right through the middle here uh, so the seam is basically to get three four yards through the hole straight up through that hole and then bend it to the outside to run away from the safety uh, and any backside pursuit that was able to uh, be there at that time so the other position, the other way that this play could be run is if this D tackle was lined up in the three hole. Uh, if the D tackle was in this three hole, either on directly on this left guard, which we're pretty close here, uh, but let's pretend that you know in this picture, if he was moved over here, either on or outside of this left guard, the left tight end would call a three audible. Upon that three tag, uh, this tells the three back that he is now kicking out the D tackle and that we are not blocking this defensive end because we're going to run underneath him. 
So the three back would then kick out the D tackle right here. Everybody else is doing the same except for the two back and the four back will have to bend it in and run through the one hole versus running through the three hole in their previous example. So this is the 43 reverse. Now moving on to the 22 wedge. The 22 wedge is a different type of play than you've seen so far on these uh, plays so far. It's a non-traditional play. It's based upon uh, running uh, a wedge formation that was very popular back in the original days of football. Uh, it is the individual linemen and backs do not have individual blocking assignments. Their job is to get into a wedge and then drive that wedge straight through the heart of the defense. The way we form the wedge is that the, the or taking a step back. The way this play works is you end up forming a V with the offensive lineman. The back with the ball is right in behind the, the point of that V. And then you have backs on either side of him helping to basically hide him while your one back runs an 18 sweep fake to the side. Uh, and then that wedge is just driving forward right through the defense. The way we form the wedge is the right guard will be the center of the wedge once it's formed. The right guard, upon snap of the ball, will take two steps forward, engaging any defender that's in front of him. The right tackle, or the, the linemen then, all of the other linemen, the tackle through the tight ends and the guard center through the tight end on the other side, will all step to the inside. They will not fire forward. If they fire forward, they'll break the wedge and the wedge won't work. They must step inside, take their inside hand, put it on the back of the, uh, of the lineman inside of them, and then take their outside hand and put it on the shoulder of the lineman inside of him. Uh, they, this will then, uh, they, once they get in that position, they will then start to push and drive with everything they got, uh, pushing this wedge forward. The right guard will feel a whole, basically he'll take his two steps and then he will quickly feel the wedge form behind him and start to push him forward like he is a battering ram. Now the four back and the three back, the three back gets in behind the guard, the four back gets in behind the power tackle, and they, they drive this forward as well. Uh, key rules you have to be aware of during this is the linemen cannot inter, interlink themselves. They can't, they can't uh, you know, hook arms or grab a hold of the jersey or any part of the uniform or reach around the linemen to their inside or outside and grab on. That's illegal, but they can push. They can push each other. Uh, the other rule to be aware of is nobody can touch the running back with the ball. If, uh, if somebody pushes the running back with the ball, that's illegal assist, which will result in the play being called back. So this is the 22 wedge. One of the other, key, this is a big time play for us. We will make this work. We will run it a lot and we will practice it a lot. And I will stress, continually stress how important it is for guys to get in there, push with everything they got and drive their legs. The way the, you know, the, the way the wedge will get broken up is either by defenders getting run over uh, and then tripping our offensive linemen or defenders trying to dive the wedge uh, and tripping the linemen and causing the wedge to fall over. But if the linemen drive their legs and step and keep their knees going high and step up and over the, the uh, obstacles in their path, we can, we can make this go through most things. So we will rep, rep, rep this and this will be a fun play.